Did you think that you were stuck with the Postgres database that is added by default when you create an app with Replit? Well, the good news is, is that you don't have to use the Neon Postgres instance that's created by default. If you're looking to move away from Postgres, or you just simply don't want to use the built-in database because you have other databases that you prefer to use, I'm going to show you in as little as two prompts how you can create an app using a database other than the Neon Postgres instance that is there by default. Let me show you how to do it in two minutes. Let's get started. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is actually just build an app from scratch. Now, if you have already built an app, you can also still do this as well. It just takes a little bit more work and that's what took me so long um, to figure this out. It will try and migrate the data over to your new instance, which obviously it's not really built to do. So the best thing to do is if you are currently using the Neon Postgres database, just wipe that clean, start fresh, keeping the main base of your app the same instead of trying to migrate the data. With that being said, let's create a new to-do app here just to demonstrate how this can work. So my first prompt will be this, create a to-do app using React and Express within memory storage. If I have it so that it automatically uses the Postgres instance, then it makes it just a little bit more difficult to do, but you can still do it. It's just gonna take a bit more prompting to get things working correctly. Let's start with in-memory storage, do start building, and then let's let the Replit agent do its thing. Now, of course, by default, it's going to try and get me to add persistence with Postgres SQL, but we're not going to do that. I'm just gonna have this do the default here, approve and start plan. Now, this is another project that I was working on earlier just to test out these prompts. And some of you might be asking, why don't you just ask it to connect to the database right from the start? Well, interestingly enough, if you do something like this, where I asked it to create a to-do app with single store as the database and gave it some other data here, it actually returns back that it sees that I, what I want to do, but it's unable to work with MySQL compatible databases right now. This is a lie. It totally can. Um, I'm also going to test this at some point with Mongo, uh, but I can guarantee you that this works with MySQL compatible databases. So if I come back to what we're building over here in our new project, you can see that it's built the to-do app. Let's add a test and click add. We see that it works and we see that we can delete. Perfect. Now we'll say, yes, it does. Add a new line here. And then I have a prompt that I've already saved that I'm gonna show you. You'll see here that next, I want to persist my data to my single store instance. You'll need to use MySQL compatible schema definitions since single store uses the MySQL wire protocol. So this is why I know that this will work with MySQL databases because I've already tested this with single store, which is MySQL wire compatible. We need to be a bit explicit here though. So make it so that automatic table creation happens make it so that automatic table creation happens during the application startup if tables don't exist. That is key to make sure we say that. Create the connection configuration using SSL and proper pool settings. Add in error handling for database operations. And then create and use the following to connect to single store. Important, envir important environment variables needed. These include single store host, single store port, single store database, single store user, single store password, and please use the included SSL certificate bundle for secure connections. That's because if you're on a free shared tier instance of single store, we need to have the .pem file attached as well. You'll see next, I have here are the docs from single store to help with connecting. Let me run through quickly what I'm going to do. Now, I already have the single store underscore bundle .pem handy, so I'm going to drop it here, and you'll see that it attaches it here. So if your database that you're using requires a specific type of certificate, make sure that you attach it there. Then I'm going to just come over to single store quickly. Now, if you don't have a database already spun up, you can spin up a new instance of single store by clicking start free, following the instructions, and then you'll eventually land over at 
this page here, which is the portal. I'm going to come to deployments. And if you're using any other database, you're likely going to have the same type of interface where I want to connect and I will do it through my app. And then most databases have this now where you're able to pick how you want to connect. I'm going to pick Node.js and I'm actually going to take this entire bit of documentation here and paste it over into my latest Replit instance here. And I need to make sure that I go a little higher here. There. And I will paste this right here. And this is going to tell it how to connect within the Node.js app that we already built. And then I'm going to hit return to see if Replit does what I expect it to. Now, while that's running, if you need the .pem file because you're going to use single store, just come down here to make sure you're pointing to the provider certificate, click this, and it will download that certificate. And that's what you're going to put over into the prompt. Now you can see here that I need the following credentials. These will be securely stored as environment variables. This sometimes works, this sometimes doesn't work. So you can grab those details from over here, host, port, user. You're gonna need your password for your user. If you're using the default user and you don't remember the password, just reset the password, grab it, and you're good to go. Make sure that you plug in each of these details. So host here. The funny thing is, is these are not in order, so make sure you paste them in correctly, as this is where I got tripped up the other day. Port is 3333, user 3333. I will grab my single store password for that particular user, paste that here, and then lastly will be my database, which is right here, db underscore mat e3995 and I will paste that in here. Now, full disclosure, this has not worked consistently for me when I've been inputting these secrets or environment variables. So sometimes you will have to iterate a bit to make sure that it's doing things correctly. You'll be able to see it in the output though. If it says something like user doesn't exist and it's you know some other string, it means it wasn't mapped correctly by Replit. So just a warning. I'm gonna click continue. I'm gonna say not now. For some reason, it sometimes gets hung up here. I'm not 100% sure what, what's happening, but let's do, let's proceed. Okay, we can see that it's adding in the code. All right, we can see that it's using the MySQL2 dependency. That's how it's gonna connect to our single store instance. I can see it changed over to MySQL, changed from PG Core over to MySQL for Drizzle ORM. Okay, it looks like we are up and running now. Could you try adding a to-do item to verify if it works now? Let's call it test one, add. Test one is there. Now, if I come back to single store in data studio, I'll do select star from to-dos. I believe that's what it would have called the table. There we go. So now we have successfully used a MySQL wire compatible database, which is single store. And I've wired that up to my Replit API and front end. So with that, we've actually went away from the default Neon Postgres instance that is provided when we create these apps in Replit. As you saw, I used single store for this. And if you wanna sign up for a free single store account, you can do so by going to singlestore.com slash trial, or you can look in the description where I've also put a link in case you wanna try it out. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe this video for more AI and code insights coming your way shortly.